Assalamualaikum lovely, hope you are well. So I'm only covering manifestation for Muslims. Now, why Muslims? Because I find there's a lot of content on the internet that is, um, you know, you give you bits and pieces on manifestation and it isn't always faith driven and that can lead us as faith driven people to get confused or maybe even go in the wrong direction when it comes to manifestation. I know in my early days when I first came across this concept, um, I was, you know, find, looking for answers, but it wasn't faith driven. Well, there were some concepts in there that were faith, faith driven, but they were led by um, people of different faiths and beliefs. And what I wanted was, you know, uh, you know, someone to tell me step by step what I should be doing when it comes to this concept of manifestation. And so I couldn't find anything. So I decided to do it myself. And having worked on this and looking at these steps um, pretty clearly, I've actually broken them down in a lot of detail and to the point where I'm thinking this should have been a paid training. It's packed with value and following these steps is what allowed me to manifest, or should I say, bring it to my life with Allah's will. You know, things like my car, my, my um, passive income properties that's going on right now my husband's job, me being self-employed since 2016, um, you know, having a business that I work around with my kids, which is con Alhamdulillah continuously growing each year. And so many other things, moving cities was a big one, you know, so some of the things that I thought I'd never ever do at some point in my life. Um, I, you know, I, I've done it, Alhamdulillah, it's happened. Um, never let, I never thought I'd leave my hometown, but it's happened. And it's happened in such a beautiful way that, you know, I want to share these steps with you so you can achieve your goals as well. Um, and it happened with everything in alignment with my faith and values. So let's go through this step. So obviously the first step is, as you probably know, is asking. You know, asking, everything starts with dua, right? Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yala, if this is good for me, grant me it. And if it's not good for me, you know, avoid, don't grant me it, you know, grant me something better. So having that trust in Allah that you will always get what you ask for or better. That mindset has to be there when, before you even do this. I know in the beginning, I had a lot of limited beliefs around this area. I didn't think I would get what I asked for. You know, I would do these steps back in 2017 and I would be thinking, well, I don't think I believe it really. And I will share with you why you need to work on your belief system. If you, if you, if I go through these steps and there's something inside of you right now that's saying, oh, I don't believe this. I don't think this will happen for me. I don't think that's true. I think this is, this is woo woo or whatever. Then work on that belief system. There's something deep that you need to work on. I've helped a lot of my clients, you know, create successful businesses. You know, when I look at my clients, subhanAllah, and I look at, you know, just generally how um, the niche that they're in, they're really successful and not many are in the same niches that they're in. I know one of my clients, you know, heading to get roles that she, the huge roles in the political area, you know, and expanding her business hugely, you know, alongside having family and everything. So, you know, these steps do work, but at the, in, the, in the process of doing that, I did have to work on their belief systems. Like things like, you know, if there was childhood trauma or limited beliefs that you, you know, your parents unconsciously passed on to you, they need to be worked on, right? Me personally, I was not brought up in a, you know, faith empowered environment. It was more like people driven, you know, what would people say? Do this because it'll please people, do that or don't do this because people won't like it. It was really much specifically around that area. And, it, and I didn't believe I could do anything. My self-worth was low. And that I didn't think Allah would listen to me, right? So I had to work on that. So you have to do this with a clean projection, with the projection of a of a newborn child who just thinks everything's abundant. They can get anything they want. They just have to ask for it, right? And that's what happens. Babies ask for it, they get it. They just gotta cry a little bit, and there you go. They get what they want. So you've got to be in that place of I'll get anything that I want. As long as it's good for me and Allah knows what's good for me. You know, I was um, coaching a client once and she was never really given anything she asked for from her parents. And 
she was her cousins would always get something that they asked for that they you know they they asked for and she wouldn't get that same thing and and that was her concept that oh i don't get what i want and she believed that i never get what i want so she even doing these steps was difficult for her so we had to do one-to-one -one breakthroughs and get her to believe that yeah allah will give you what you want but i'll share the steps with you you have to take these steps because it has to be aligned with your values you have to you have to activate your unconscious mind i want to teach you how to do that yourself so again just be aware you have to ask and believe which is the next step but i will come back to the asking be specific this is the first step be specific of the ask part right be specific what do you want what is it you want right describe it and then within that why do you want it why do you want it now if you want to do this to yourself Give yourself 21 plus more than that if you want to reasons why you want this thing that you want because what we want to do here with this little exercise is activate your unconscious mind it is your unconscious mind that will help you get that goal okay so let's go through it you want something okay so I'll just, i did this just to, for the purpose of this video so you want something, okay? So it comes up, you see something and you want it. And this is your conscious mind. Hey, I want this car, I want this house, or I want to move to this place. I want to um, have this business, whatever it is. It's your own, it's your conscious mind, which is so small. It's like 5% of all of your own, all of your mind. Okay, it's about 5%. And then the rest of this in this diagram is your unconscious mind. So if you see the, the white, it's all your unconscious mind. The black area that I've marked just for the purpose of you just you know demonstrating your mind is the conscious mind, the one that says, I want this. Okay. Now, this is where a lot of manifestations go wrong, is people say, I want this relationship or I want this car. They don't go deep enough as to why they want it. Because it's not your conscious mind that gets you the goal. It's your unconscious mind, right? the conscious mind says i want this right it's the unconscious mind that says okay let me just check in have i got the resources to give you it you want this okay do i have the resources and the unconscious mind will check in with the past will check in with the memories with the values with the beliefs okay i put that down here with the values the beliefs the emotions involved to get that thing that you've asked for right and if it hasn't got those resources, it will not give it to you. It will not help you because it doesn't know how to get them, right? It will do its best. But what we do is reprogram this. And the quick way for you to do it yourself is to write down 21 reasons or more. Why do you want this? And those reasons need to align with you. Like if you want a car, let's just say. Um, if I was to say I want, I want this car, right? A six seater maybe or seven seater, right? For me, if someone was to say to me, I want, um, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not really great with cars right now in terms of knowledge, so just bear with me. If someone says, hey, I want a six seater there and it's miles per gallon or like something like 20 and it is hugely bad for the environment, I would pop and it's a six seater and it's a nice looking car, I would say no to it. I, I may get it. You know, 10 years ago, I probably would probably say, okay, great, I'll get it. But now, because what matters to me is the environment and I want the car to be eco-friendly for the environment and obviously for me as well, <laughs> right? And so, you know, 25 per miles per gallon or 20 miles per gallon isn't great, right? It has to be something like 60 miles per gallon for me to get it. Um, so, so, so just look at this. This is a car that gives me 20 miles per gallon and it's a six seater. That is something I may want, but do I really want it? Is it aligned with my values? Because my values, one of my values is to be enviro friendly as much as possible. That's in my control. Whereas that six seater with 20 miles per gallon is not enviro friendly. I'm going to have to pay, uh, plus I have to pay 500 pounds, something like 500 pounds per year on tax which is, I think for me, it's a waste of money when I can get an eco-friendly car with six seats as well, right? And for me, I will compromise on the look of the car. That's me, right? Not everybody's the same as me, but I will not compromise on the environment part of it. 
So for me, I would feel guilty. If I bought that car that was 20 miles per gallon, six liter, I would feel guilty driving it. And most likely I would probably <laughs> not have that car for some time. I would probably end up, because the unconscious mind works for you, it commands you. And if you feel icky in something or doing something wrong, it doesn't feel right to you, something goes wrong with that, that thing. It always does. I remember having a microwave in my house and I said to my husband, oh my gosh, I don't think we should have this. It's not really healthy for us to have a microwave. And then next day, that microwave, which was fairly new, it was probably a year or so old, um, it broke. We put something in it and it just wouldn't open, the door just shut and it just sealed. And, and that's it, we couldn't get access to that microwave, we just had to chuck it out and we didn't have one since then, right? Anything that feels awkward will leave from your life. It literally will. And I remember buying a BMW in 2000, maybe 17, at the time when I wasn't aware of my values to the level I am today, I bought a BMW, it wasn't environment friendly, it was, you know, it wasn't a comfortable car as well, for me comfort matters, and uh, I could, there was no place for tea, right, holder, and I just, uh, I wasn't, I liked the car, I liked what it gave me, the, the you know, the, oh gosh, it's a BMW, you know, like it looked good on me, in terms of the value it has in this country, but it didn't fit with my values, and nine months later or eight months later that car was stolen right so it's powerful stuff so watch your feelings always watch your feelings if you don't feel good with getting something it will either come to you and leave as quickly as it came which which happens a lot with money if you want x amount of money but you feel guilty or feel a bit oof, awkward having it it will leave you'll either give it away in guilt to people or charity, which is good to do, I'm not saying it's not good to do, but if it's in guilt, it's not good for you either. So, you know, you won't keep something that you want, or you probably won't even get it. Okay, so you gotta check in. You want something? Okay, yeah, yeah, I want this car. Why do you want it? It must fit in with your values. With one-to-one -one clients, and in my group programs, I do an exercise where I listed values of my clients, and then, okay, what they say they want something, we elicit the values and it should be congruent to their values. There should be no conflict. This is a really deep exercise we do. And it takes a good hour to two hours to do. And so we make sure what they want doesn't conflict with their values. And if it does, we clean up the values. We clean up the memories in terms of the emotions in the memories. And then the values need to be clean, should we say, in the best words. So when you're asking, you must align it with your values. Why do you want that thing? It mustn't be because, oh, she's got it and I want to just, you know, do <laughs> one bigger than her or, you know, I want to get better than her or him. I want uh, to look better than him or her, right? That is superficial. There's nothing, you know, may not be nothing, anything wrong with that, but it has to be deep. It has to be deep. That BMW that I got, it was literally just to look good, to, to look rich, right? It was back in my days of starting a business and I wanted people to think, oh, she's successful. That's all it was. I did like the car, but my deeper values was enviro friendly. My deeper value was, was comfort, right? I wanted to feel comfortable in a car because I used to drive, you know, every month for a good, um, what was, how, many, how many miles? I think we did about 600 miles almost a month sometimes, right? So it wasn't comfortable. It didn't feel right. And that car left, left my life in the most, you know, could have, could have avoided it if I just got it, you know, aligned with my values. But alhamdulillah, whatever happens is a learning and I learned from that. So next time I buy a car, it has to fit with my values, enviro friendly, which is the one I've got right now. It's not the best looking car, but it's enviro friendly, it's comfortable, I can put my tea there, coffee there, whatever I want, and it's got a sat nav and it's perfect, right, for me right now. It feels right to me. So must feel right to you, that's number one. Why do you want it? So it's good for you, it's good for your family, it's good for the community, it's good for the environment. You have to check in with these things, feel aligned. And then number two, which is obviously the believe part. You have to believe what you want. Now here you've got to take on some mindsets that everything is happening for you towards this goal. Up and downs will happen. They literally will. This, this life is, you know, up and down. You think you're five steps forward and then you're like 10 steps back, but you're not. You're just a couple steps back, but you're still forward than where you were before. So you will get obstacles, we're here to grow. There are some 
beliefs I want to bring into you and, and you have to take these beliefs and just check in with you throughout this video you know whatever what are you rejecting is what needs to be worked on because I like I said since 2017 have been working on this and I've done several ways and this is the best way you have to adapt these mindsets and attitudes so expect whatever will happen is towards our goal the ups and downs are towards our goal Okay, so when you're going a little bit down, you, you face a challenge or an obstacle, just know that everything's working out for me, right? Whatever that is, maybe you're learning a new skill set, maybe you're learning a new characteristic that would help you to in that ultimate goal, right? And I will go into some detail around this, okay? So for example, for me to come into the city I'm in, I leave my hometown, I had to go through certain health issues to identify the importance of my hereafter, right? My decision, since I went through that health issue, I mean, overall I'm pretty healthy, alhamdulillah, I've always been healthy. Um, there has been, you know, complications in pregnancies, but other than that, that I've been alhamdulillah healthy. But this time I had a health complication, but that obstacle you know increased my compassion towards others especially people that are going through health issues it increased my awareness in my leaving this world it got me to prepare to leave this world whereas before I wasn't doing anything to you know I was saying oh yeah inshallah you know I'm not scared of death but that situation did scare me because oh my gosh I'm not ready to go like I haven't worshipped enough I haven't even got a will you know my kids you know this age and all that come up and what happened was because of that situation my decisions were different right I heard about a challenge that was happening with my relative in Birmingham and I came within how many months later of having that operation um, nine six seven months later I made the decision I'm gonna go Right? So obviously there's so many learnings that I could take from that health situation that I went through. But in terms of the move to Birmingham, which I wanted for a long time, it gave me that jump to just do it. What I'm gonna get, what I'm gonna benefit from here is looking after my relative is so much for my here and in my next world. I'm preparing my decisions now, you know, hopefully all of them, because obviously we've all got blind spots, but most of my decisions I can say are Okay, is it good for me here and the next world? I want a win-win, right? So that obstacle, as, as painful as it was, I had to develop or get to that mindset again, because you do go down, and I did go down. I was really in a victim mode. So I got the help that I needed to get out of it through my mentors and my, my, my coaches, is get back up emotionally and, and see this being a blessing. And, you know, at the time of this video, it's been a, a, over a year now since that time. It, it is a blessing. There's so many blessings that I've picked up on during that obstacle. So you will have to look at the obstacles like a blessing. This is a mindset you need to adapt. And if you're not adapting it, then get the help that you need because this will really help you. So expecting that whatever happens is towards your goal. Everything is working out for me. Okay. Some things will show up in their learnings later on than the others so it'll be sooner and then expect whatever you've asked for to happen you have to be in that, that, that belief stage you have to expect it to happen if not this then something better if not this then something better because Allah gives us the best Allah knows us more than we know ourselves Allah knows what's good for us more than what we know what's good for us it's in the Quran so adapting these beliefs into our being is important not just reading the quran but actually believing in it and implementing it so i'm giving you these things that are not you know non-faith led um allah, allah loves us more than 70 mothers or, or no the love of one mother is is allah's 70 times more so and your mother loves you so much right allah loves us 70 times more so he will only give us the best and we, we may want this, it may not be the best for us. We may, you know, he may, we may get something better. So you've got to assume that. Have that expectation. And there's some things you can do to help you with the mindset shift is to write down every day what you've asked for. 
or most of the days, you know, five times a week you can do, if not every day, right? So I am happy this is what I write down. I will be sharing this with the written side of things as well, alongside this video. I'm so happy and grateful I have whatever that is that you want and it feels amazing. Put those feelings down, how it feels for you. I'm so happy, like just activate those feelings. Although you said at the beginning, I'm so happy and grateful, activate it even more. It happened, alhamdulillah, it happened, like as if it's happening right now. This happened, then you would write, because I took this action step, whatever the action step is. You don't have to write those words down, but you would write down because I, I don't know, if it's a business goal, I prospected every day, I put out content every single day, I spoke to, you know, so many people, had X amount of calls per day or week, and and it happened, I hit this goal. You, you write it down as if it's happened. Now, this is just to get your mind to stay focused on the goal. This is just a, you know, a little thing that we do in NLP to get you to focus on your goal. Right, and then make it so it's there in front of you so you can get it quicker. And that's what you would do in terms of a little exercise. And then and then whilst in that believing stage you're at, you would visualize your goal happening. You know, like you can do this consciously sitting down, give yourself five minutes, or you can just do it throughout the day, right? I mean I was literally visualizing being being in the city I'm in almost every day. Because I love the city, I loved being here. I used to come here anyway every month. And I wished, oh, I could just come here, I live here. And I used to just visualise myself, you know, going to the centre that we go to and, you know, cleaning there, you know, being of service there. Um, and, and it was just nice, right? And I felt good when I did it. Several times a day I used to do it. And look where I am, I'm in the same city. And that I visualised. And it, it was impossible. There was no, no, nothing that would uh, would tell me that I'll come here this time last year. And it's been, like I said, um, not this time last year, because <laughs> I came last year. <laughs> We're in 20, the time of the record of this video is 2022. So, you know, two, three years ago, nothing was planning, nothing was showing that I would be in the city that I'm in. But it happened. And whilst even at belief stage, you have to get rid of your fears as well. Because I took the leap. I didn't think about, oh, how am I going to put this other house on rent? How am I going to do this? I just did it. I, I was told by my mentor to just go. You know, you've got 15 days, go. And then I went, packed my stuff, took my clothes, took the clothes to the kids, left everything else. Yeah, left everything else. And alhamdulillah, my, my family there dealt with everything else there. But you have to get rid of your fears. And if you struggle with that, then work on it, you know, I release fear, I use techniques that help me release fear because when you're in fear, you haven't got trust, you're not trusting, you're not trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fear takes us the work, takes us the work away, so you trust the process, you trust the process massively. I mean, to get in the city, we, we did make a lot of losses in terms of money, and but Ultimately, I know it, it worked out. It will work out. It has worked out. It is working out, ultimately. So I, I was okay with that. I'll get the money back in ten folds, because I'm doing it not just for my dunya. I'm doing it for my akhirah as well. I'm doing it to please Allah, ultimately. And then Allah will deal with that. Allah will deal with that other thing that that needs to come back, whatever it is, or or be more of. So. You'll have to take the plunge, you'll have to work on getting rid of fear if it does come up or anything, anything limiting, anything limiting, okay? Um, and then, yeah, so while you're visualising, you have to act as if you've got it. Act as if you've got it. And so what I want you to do in this one is to just activate those emotions. How do you feel if you got that car? How do you feel if you got that house? How do you feel if you got that business? What emotion would it give you? Happy? Excited? Activate those emotions now. That is a must because you will get more of what you want. So if you feel excited today, you'll get more things that will get you to feel more excited. That's how law of attraction works. If it works on feelings. If you are happy, it'll give you more events of happiness. Okay? Yeah, I'm not saying never that will have obstacles. 
you will, I mentioned that earlier, but you'll get out of them quicker. You'll be more resourceful to get out of them quicker. Because Allah wants ease for us. And what is ease for us? Being happy, being positive, being joyful as much as we can. Right? That's ultimate self-love, self-care, is when you're active and joy in your body. So act as if you've already got it. And if this is towards somebody else that you're doing, like you want a job maybe for your spouse, um, and you visualize it as if he's already got it, then act as if he's already got it. So your behavior towards your spouse will be different. Now this isn't a relationship one as such, but act as if he's already got the job. How are you behaving towards him? Because there, there can be resentment towards spouses if they're not on the job that your, your spouse kind of wants you to get to. Well, that's coach a lot of women in that area where they think, oh, my husband is underachieving. He should, he should be getting more than this. Then I'm like, okay, just, just assume he's got it. Assume he's got it. How are you behaving? How are you acting? And then a few weeks later, I'm, I'm not even kidding. I think it's not even a few months. One of my clients' spouse got the job she wanted him to get. Literally, they were just waiting for... The, the paperwork to clear and it was so quick this can happen really quick as well and it can happen after a while so you must wait but during that time of belief you know you act as if anyway you're visualizing enjoy the process enjoy the process it may take a few weeks like that clients of mine mine's a spouse or it may take longer but you you just gotta focus on the process you gotta just focus on the process that, hey, are you living in your highest values every single day? How are you feeling every single day during that process? Because that is the ultimate. Because this is it, once you've got this goal, you're gonna want a new one. So why not focus on enjoying the process? You must enjoy the process. And then number three of this is you receive. You receive it. You know, what you seek is seeking you. Or you receive something better. It's Alhamdulillah, it's always happened. And it's always your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the stronger it is, the, the quicker you'll manifest what you want or better than what you've asked for. Hope this was useful. If you do have any questions, you can always reach out to me and leave any comments and I will get back to you. And obviously the last part of receiving is easy. You receive it and now you want something new, right? And you take the steps again. And um, again, like I said, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. And I will inshallah catch you in the next video.